good afternoon and let me first of all thank the department of uh, medicine for inviting me for this talk on an update on primary headaches so these are the three three main groups of uh, primary headaches we have migraine headaches tension type headaches and trigeminal autonomic cephalalgias which where are the various types of uh, tac headaches so if these headaches occur for more than 15 days a month we term them as chronic otherwise uh, they we term them as episodic uh, headaches now primary headaches are the ones who don't have an underlying disease whereas secondary headaches are due to an underlying medical medical condition and some of them can be serious problems but we should understand that rarely you can get a patient having two types of primary headaches uh, going on at the same time for example a patient can have a migraine along with the tension type headache also you can have a patient who you have been following up for a primary headache like migraine developing a secondary headache or like for example a patient with migraine can develop a tumor which you should not miss out when you see on follow up also it is very commonly seen that secondary headache can trigger a primary headache like a patient who gets a head trauma uh, later on can develop migraine now coming to each of these uh, primary headaches in detail first we will look at the tension type headache because this is the commonest primary headache uh, seen in clinical practice so here when you should consider somebody to have tension type headache a use, useful clinical approach is these are headaches which has uh, no features they are completely featureless the patient will just have a dull aching pain all over the head bilateral and uh, he won't have any nausea no uh, vomiting no throbbing or pulsatile quality and the patient may not have any aggravating factors two important clues for these tension type headaches one is usually these headaches tend to peak towards the evening time and second thing is uh, when you examine these patients you may be able to elicit muscle areas of muscle stiffness and tenderness when you if you use uh, palpate uh, just palpate palpating with your index and your middle finger you might get uh, tender areas on the trapezius on the sinoclidomastoid and uh, the masseters and temporalis muscles so before we understand how to treat them we should understand the pathophysiology so usually what happens is initially the patient will have something called episodic tension type headache here what happens is there is continuous nociceptive input from the pericranial myofascial tissues going into the pain sensitive areas of the brain and later on it become chronic the usual triggers what we commonly see is uh, using your cell phone in a with a neck in a flexed posture as you can see from this uh, diagram each degree flex flexion will put more pressure on your cervical spine and which can act as a constant trigger other things like uh, bad posture especially using computers or sometimes the patient may not be aware of uh, things like carrying a heavy handbag or a backpack which may be triggering uh, these headaches so whatever the trigger if there is continuous nociceptive input what will happen is the brain will undergo a change called central sensitization and when this happens the patient enters into the chronic phase of tension type headache because once this central sensitization happens even the stimuli which is no normally innocuous are now sensed as pain by the brain so whenever you have a patient with tension type headache the treatment involves both targeting the peripheral and central mechanisms for peripheral mechanisms the first thing is to avoid all your face my facial triggers physical therapy is very very important uh, part of management you can teach the patient relaxation technique and post symptomatic relief you can give nsids 
targeting the central mechanisms the only drug which has been proven to be of benefit is amitriptyline you can also try cognitive behavioral therapy definitely avoiding stress and also acupuncture therapy also been shown to be of use physical therapy the main thing is improving your posture especially at work teaching the patient muscle relaxation techniques application of hot and cold packs and ultrasound and electrical stimulation of the uh, sore muscles also will be of uh, help cognitive behavioral therapy is another way where the patient is taught to identify thoughts emotions and beliefs that uh, they feel generate and aggravate the headache and overcome them this is usually done with the help of a uh, uh, psychologist coming to the next group of primary headache which is the migraine headaches here you have strict criteria when to call a patient having a migraine headaches the main thing is the headaches should be at least lasting for 4 to 72 hours and the patient should have had five at least five attacks before you can label him having migraine the other important uh, clues are unilateral location a pulsatile quality for the headache and associated uh, features like nausea vomiting photophobia and phonophobia so if the patient has along with this if they have at least two attacks where there has been aura which can be either visual sensory motor or brain stem then you can label the patient having migraine with aura otherwise it will be a common migraine without aura now in a patient with migraine they go through four phases the first phase is called the prodrome where the patient will feel tired they may be yawning excessively and they may be craving for certain food items second is the phase of aura which the most common aura is the visual auras you can get other auras depending on each patient and the third phase is where the patient has the migraine headache and this will be associated with other features as i told you and usually the headache phase will end in some patients they will have vomiting which will give them relief or they'll go into a deep sleep and then the headache will disappear the last phase is the prodrome where the patient can feel usually they feel very tired or some patients might be even euphoric and uh, this is the fourth phase the important thing to know is not all patients need to have all these four phases and they can be quick overlap between these uh, phases now uh, there has been many theories to explain the pathophysiology of migraine over the last many decades first we have the vascular theory then the neural theory and now we have the neurovascular theory however the activation of the trigeminal vascular system is the key in the pathogenesis of migraine so we'll just go through how the trigeminal ganglia gets activated so the first we have the key the main trigger starts from the hypothalamus and scans have shown that the hypothalamus activation occurs even prior to the onset of migraine pain also this can explain why some triggers like menstruation emotions hunger and sleep deprivation can trigger a episode of migraine attack once this uh, hypothalamus activation occurs it will trigger what you call as cortical spreading depression so this is a neuronal wave of neuronal depolarization which propagates very slowly over 2 to 3 minutes over the cortex and then and this is the reason why you get your aura of migraine and finally the cortical spreading depression will activate the trigeminal ganglia and this will cause release of uh, various neurotransmitters which will cause the headache now looking carefully at what happens when the trigeminal nerves at the trigeminal nerve ending you have release of various neurotransmitters serotonin glutamate substance p and also most important calcitonin gene related peptides each of these neurotransmitters have their own receptors 
and once they act on these receptors they'll uh, the downstream the net effect is vasodilatation and sterile inflammation so as you know the trigeminal uh, branches into intracranially to, in, uh, to innervate cerebral vessels pyel vessels dura and large sinuses so when this happens you get severe headache on one side of the uh, head that is what you call as classical headache and migraine now understanding this pathophysiology helps us to give targeted therapies uh, for these patients so you can target the vasodilatation and sterile inflammation you can target the the neurotransmitters itself either the protection or trans transportation you can also target the neurotransmitters when they are released into the neuromuscular junctions so these are all targets we can uh, have during the treatment so nsids which is the main stay usually targets the vasodilatation and the sterile inflammation you have tryptans and beta blockers which will counter the vasodilatation caused by the neurotransmitters amitriptyline and fluoxetine counters the action of uh, serotonin and you have various antiepileptic drugs which will act at the neurotransmitter production and uh, transportation and at the neuromuscular junctions you can have botulinum toxin and also tryptans by their 5ht1d in uh, causes inhibition of the neurotransmitter release itself and also there is a new class of drugs called dietens which acts at the serotonin receptor now what has happened in the last few years is there has been many therapies uh, which has been targeting the calcitonin gene related peptides so you have a group of drugs called gpans which acts as G c therapy receptor antagonist so three drugs has been approved by the fda in the last uh, two years and all of them can be administered orally and can be used for both for migraine uh, prophylaxis as well as for acute episodes of migraine you have monoclonal antibodies uh, targeting the cgrp once it is released to mop it up and there has been three uh, drugs which has been approved now and the important is these are drugs which can be given as subcute injection or infusion once in a month or some of them can be given only every 3 months which is very convenient for the patient and lastly we have monoclonal antibody targeting the cgrp receptor itself and the drug called ernumab uh, which can also be used by the patient himself every month just like uh, you give insulin can be given subcutaneously monthly however there are strict uh, guidelines when we can start this we cannot give for all patients we just uh, diagnose with migraine first of all the patient should have had uh, at least two prior treatment failures with the usual drugs we use and also if the patient is unable to use any of these preventive therapies so there are strict guidelines where we can use these newer agents now coming to the last group of uh, primary headaches that is the trigeminal autonomic cephalalgia also called tac headaches uh, here the pathophysiology is slightly different the main trigger here is the posterior hypothalamus which sends impulses via the v1 division of the trigeminal nerve which in turn activates the parasympathetic uh, uh, ganglia and once this happens you get the classical uh, features of these tac headaches that is congenital congestion lacrimation and rhinorrhea also there is a uh, release of uh, cgrp and vasoactive interstandal peptides from these nerve endings which will cause the severe pain some patients can develop a horner like syndrome this is because of uh, compression or stretching of the Uh, carotid artery which has the sympathetic fibers uh, so then there will be a parasympathetic vaso uh, due, due to uh, vasodilatation so these are all the features and the the prototype of this trigeminal autonomic cephalalgia is the cluster headache so cluster headache will be as i told you strictly unilateral lasting for 15 minutes to 3 hours 
and it will follow a strict circadian rhythm. That is, the headache will occur exactly on the same around the same time every day, and it will be a very severe pain, and the patient will be very restless and agitated during the episodes of pain. It's called cluster headache because these headaches occurs in clusters. lasting for weeks or months separated by periods of remission which can last anywhere from months to years it's important to diagnose uh, and differentiate this cluster headache from other headache because the the treatment is different for both the acute episodes as well as for prophylaxis acute episodes you can give oxygen inhalation injection of simitriptan or nasal sprays oral simitriptan won't work in these patients and if the patient is having short clusters you can give a tapering schedule of steroids and for long clusters you might use uh, drugs like verapamil and lithium also now you have other mod mod modalities like uh, deep brain stimulation targeting the posterior hypothalamus also cgr cgg reactive protein inhibitors also been tried in cluster headaches there are other cluster headaches uh, which differs in duration and frequency you should uh, have uh, understanding of two such what one is hemicrania continua and uh, paroxysmal hemicrania because both of these uh, are very much responsive to indomethacin and in fact these are called indomethacin responsive headaches so when you have a patient with primary headache you ought you should understand this the pathophysiology is different for each of these and the treatment is also different you will have a normal imaging and the only way to correctly diagnose is by a detailed history there's no other way to diagnose and differentiate this so always use the socrates uh, synonym where you have site of pain in migraine it will be unilateral in tac headaches also it will be unilateral but strictly centered around the orbit and tension type headache will be a diffuse type of pain onset is very important because the patient might come to you during a chronic phase so you have to go back take a longitudinal history and look at what happens in the early years or months of the headache the migraine so to differentiate between these three types of headache longitudinal history is very important the character of the headache in tac headaches will be a very bad pain the patient will be having radiation whereas in migraine you can get radiation but the headache quality will be of throbbing or pulsatile uh, nature and then tension type headache it will be a pressing or uh, tight uh, quality of uh, headache they may be associated aura photophobia phonophobia in patients with migraine which may not be seen with the uh, others in tac headaches you get you have to have autonomic changes in the eye like conjunctival uh, congestion and watering and nasal stuffiness in patients with migraine uh, usually during the episodes they would like to rest in a quiet dark room and avoid any triggers which may not be so in tension type headaches whereas in trigeminal headaches the patient, patient will be very restless walking around because of very severe nature of the pain so uh, i would conclude by saying that history is the key for diagnosing and differentiating these th three groups of uh, primary headaches and understanding the pathology is essential for choosing effective therapies and always a combination of lifestyle modification and medications are needed to give them uh, long term relief and you should have knowledge of the newer targeted therapies which are now available for some of these uh, primary headache disorders thank you